Hi there, Andrew here, aka that one Unity dev. If you haven't seen the course announcement video, this is a lecture taken directly out of my 2.5D turn-based RPG course. This lecture is actually towards the end of the course, and although the content might not be super useful, I've chosen this lecture as it shows off a good majority of what we'll be creating in this project. With all that being said, if this is something that interests you, you can pick up the course right now over on the Game Dev TV website, and by using my link in the description or the pinned comment of this video, you will get a hefty discount. So with that, enjoy the lecture and don't go anywhere at the end because I'll pop back in to wrap things up. In this lecture, we have battle visuals for our party member Claire. I am in our overworld scene and we're going to get Claire ready for battle. To do this, let's import the Claire sprite sheet into the sprites folder. So let's open up the sprites folder and I'm just going to come over to my other monitor and drag the Claire sprite into the sprites folder. And don't worry, the sprite sheet is going to be available in the resources of this lecture. Let's click on our Claire sprite and let's change the texture type from default to sprite 2D. We can then make sure the sprite mode is set to multiple with 16 pixels per unit. Let's finish off our import settings by changing the filter mode from bilinear to point and our compression from normal quality to none. We can then hit apply and open up our sprite editor. Inside our sprite editor, let's come up to the top left, hit the slice button and change the type from automatic to grid by cell size. Let's change the pixel size to 32 by 32 and let's just hit the slice button. And now our clear sprite is all nice and sliced. We can then exit out of the sprite editor and make sure we save our changes. Back in Unity, our John player character has an overworld visual with an idle and walking animation, as well as a separate battle visual that holds some UI and has attack animations. We're pretty much going to want to repeat the exact same process, but with Claire, by having two different prefabs. So to start with the battle prefab, let's navigate to the prefabs folder, go into battle visuals, and let's duplicate our John battle visual prefab. I'm just going to hit Control D and that will duplicate the prefab. We can then rename our prefab to Claire Battle Visual. And then let's double click on that to open it up. Inside our Claire Battle Visual, we are going to need to make some changes. The first thing we're going to do is come over to our hierarchy, navigate to the name in the Battle Visual canvas, and let's change the name from John to Claire. And now that the name is changed, let's click on our battle visual canvas and let's just hide it for now. As it was kind of intrusive and we're going to be needing to make some animations and we don't want that to be getting in the way. We can then click on our John object and let's rename this from John underscore zero to something like Claire. Let's then navigate to our sprites folder and we can change our sprite renderer sprite from John zero to be Claire zero. So I'm just going to drag and drop that into the sprite slot. And now it no longer looks like John and Claire actually looks like Claire. We are then going to click on the Claire battle visual main parent object and we're going to remove the animator. With the animator now removed, let's navigate to window, animation, animation, and we should now have a brand new animation timeline. As you can see, Claire has no animation, so let's hit the Create button. Let's navigate to our Animations folder. Let's create a new folder, and let's call it Claire Battle. Inside the Claire Battle folder, let's create an idle animation. And now we are ready to go and make the animation. I'm going to change the samples to three, and then I'm going to hit the Record button, click on our Claire sprite, Click on the first frame of animation, and I'm going to drag the second last sprite into the sprite slot. And now the Claire Battle Visual Parent object has an animation of the Claire object switching sprites to play an idle animation. As you remember, we're going to want this shadow to follow Claire, so let's click on our shadow, drag it down a little bit, then let's come over to the Curves option, hit Control A, right click and set both tangents to constant. If you remember, this just gets rid of the tweening from our capsule from going up and down. And with that finished, we can now preview our idle animation. 
So you just see Claire bobbing up and down with the shadow being nice and snappy. Which brings us to this lecture's challenge. Create a tanking, hit, and death animations for Claire. If you get stuck, feel free to navigate to the John Battle Visual Prefab and just take a look at what's going on over there, as we're basically just going to recreate that but with the Claire sprites. So why don't you take a moment, pause the video, and do that now. Welcome back! Let's create the attack, hit, and death animations. So I'm going to click on the idle animation and create a new clip. And let's create the attack animation. The attack animation is going to be 12 samples. I'm then going to click on the clear object, hit record, and then let's start filling in our animation. So for the first frame, I'm going to use this half turn pose. The second frame can be the bow pose. And then just go through each and every frame, just kind of filling it all in. And then I'm just going to come back over to where the bow is being withdrawn a little bit. And then back to the half turn pose. And then back to the standing idle pose. So now when I hit play, we have a little bit of a bow animation. Before we finish off the animation, if you remember, our characters are supposed to slide forward 0.5 in the X when they do their attack animation. So all we have to do is come to position and just hit 0.5. Let's then create a new clip and let's create a hit animation. For the hit animation, I'm going to hit record and change the samples back to 12. And then we can throw in our hit sprite. So let's click on Claire and just drag and drop the hit sprite into the sprite renderer. If you remember, we have the color starting at red and then going back to white. So let's change the color to red. And then on, let's say, the fifth frame, we can change it back to white. So then our hit animation just looks like this. And with the hit animation now complete, let's work on the death animation. So let's uncheck record. Let's create a new clip. Let's call it death. And this animation is only going to be one frame. So let's hit record. And we can take our dead sprite and drag it into the sprite renderer. And then let's rotate our shadow in the Z axis by 90 degrees and then just move it down slightly to match our Claire sprite. And that's it. Our death animation is now finished. So we can go ahead and we can exit out of the animation timeline. Even though we have all of our animations in place, Claire is still not ready for battle. We still have to set everything up in the animator. So let's navigate to window, animation, and open up the animator tab. In the animator tab, let's set things up to be a little bit more organized for our Claire object. So I'm just going to move the entry up a little bit. I'll move the death to be, I don't know, in the top right of the idle. The attack to be directly next to it. And then the hit to be below the attack. And this will just keep things a little bit more organized. Let's then navigate over to our parameters tab and let's add in some triggers. So the first trigger we're going to add is the is attack trigger. So let's click on the plus navigate to trigger and capital I is capital A attack. We are then going to do the same thing for the dead and hit triggers. So let's make a trigger capital I is capital D dead. Let's make another trigger, capital I is, capital H, hit. And now we're ready to set up our animations. The first animation we can set up is the attack animation. So right click on idle, make transition to attack. And then we might as well make a transition back to idle. So right click on attack, make transition, and then click on the idle. These animations can now transition from one to the other. Let's click on idle to attack. Come to conditions, hit the plus icon, and make sure the is attack trigger is selected. We are then going to exit our runtime, open up the settings window, and change the transition duration from 0.25 to 0.1. Let's click on the attack to idle transition. We're going to want exit time, but we're going to change it from 0.6 to 1, and we're going to change the transition duration to 0.1 as well. We are then going to go from idle to hit, and from hit back to idle. Let's click on the idle to hit transition, uncheck exit time, change the transition to 0.1. Let's scroll down and add the condition is hit. We are then going to click from hit to idle. We want it to have exit time, but the exit time should be one and the transition duration will be 0.1 as well. 
And now we are ready for the last transition. We're going to go from idle to death. And because we have no revive mechanic, we no longer need to go from death to idle. So from the idle to death transition it is going to not have exit time, a transition duration of, you guessed it, 0.1. And when we scroll down, we're going to need the condition is dead. And that's it. All of our transitions and animations should be ready for a player to have a battle. We can then exit the animator. Before we exit out the clear battle visual, let's make sure that we enable the battle visual canvas, as we only wanted that disabled for the purpose of making our animations. And now we can exit out of the prefab. Claire is now ready for battle, but we still have to do one more thing. Let's navigate over to our scriptable objects folder, and let's click on the Claire scriptable object. All we need to do is find the member battle visual prefab and let's just click the little dot, navigate to the assets tab and click our clear battle prefab. And now Claire should be ready to battle. Let's encounter her via the capsule and then let's go into the battle with her. So I am walking up to the capsule. Claire has joined the party. Let's go into the battle. We have a battle. We have three slimes. We have John and Claire. And John is going to attack a slime, and Claire is going to attack a different slime. A slime attacks Claire, a slime attacks Claire, and a slime attacks John. Claire has attacked a slime, Claire defeated a slime, and John has defeated his own slime. Both party members played their appropriate animation, and the battle continues as usual. But that's all the time we have for this lecture, and in the next lecture, we're going to make Claire's overworld visual so we can once and for all do away with this ugly capsule. So there you have it. You made it to the end of the lecture. Like I said in the beginning of the video, maybe the content wasn't super useful for your projects, but you should have a very good idea of whether the course will be a good fit for you or not. This course has just been a really great experience overall, and a lot of time and care went into creating it. With that being said, thank you so much for staying until the end of the video. And again, if you're interested in the course, a link will be in the description or pinned comment of this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you in the next one.